Thank See you very you. much, John. And welcome, everybody. Um, so, yeah, as, uh, as John said, I want to talk about bringing order to the office of the CISO. Um, we've heard a lot about technology so far today, but in my view, security is about so much more than technology. It's about people and process and technology. So, um, first of all, I want to baseline what we mean by the office of the CISO. It can mean different things to different people. Um, so, so the, you know, the chief information security officer and his or her organization is responsible for uh, protecting the security of the enterprise, making sure the enterprise is secure. Uh, that can include physical security, it can also include uh, digital security. So the physical security might be protecting the spoken word, for example. Uh, the digital security is about, it's the commonly used term uh, for, uh, for cyber security here. So when we're talking about protecting digital systems, we're talking about um, data, devices, um, from, from security incidents and breaches. So we have this definition on, on the left-hand side of the, of the slide here. Um, Ovum, at Ovum, we've developed this, uh, this view of, the, uh, of what the Office of the CISO is responsible for and the levers on the Office of the CISO. So the CISO um, is responsible for protecting the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information using security technology, but also people and process. So we have um, that group influenced by, um, by the user community. So the user community is not just our workforce. And of course, our workforce can be temporary, it can be permanent, it can be contractors. But we also have customers, partners, suppliers who are coming in and out of our organization, in and out of our various systems uh, as needs be. And then surrounding that are the levers on security. So governance, so organizational governance should drive security governance. Um, risk, big area, organizational risk should drive um, information security risk. Compliance, we've already heard about GDPR and the importance of, of complying. Compliance is not security, and security is not compliance, but compliance is a big lever on security. And then we have the people, process, and technology there as well. So the processes, how we actually interact with uh, the processes within our organization to make sure that we're as secure as possible. The technology, that's about the big technology estate that we might have, whether that's on-prem or whether that's in the cloud or multi-clouds, hybrid clouds, so on and so forth. And then the people as well, so how people actually work with uh, the security technology that we have. So that's kind of baseline in the office of the CISO. The challenges that the CISO um, faces, uh, first of all, kind of these, these external uh, challenges, reputational challenges. Uh, you do not want to be the next talk talk we've had mentioned or, or anybody else. The Capital One data breach, has, has anybody heard about that one recently? Fairly recent one, uh, last month I think it was. Um, and that's a really interesting one from a cloud perspective. So Capital One put some workloads in the AWS cloud and somebody at AWS decided that uh, they might not like to steal some of this information. Now, it was because Capital One did not apply the appropriate security to their workload in the cloud. It wasn't AWS's responsibility, it was Capital One's responsibility. This person then stole millions of records and um, true to form, uh, as Helen said earlier, then she chose to brag about it and so was caught. Um, but that is just a fairly typical example of the sort of challenges that the Office of the CISO faces. So at Ovum, we, uh, we do some research every year. Well, we do lots of research every year, of course. But um, one of our big pieces of research is our ICT Enterprise Insights Survey. And um, within that, we survey around 5,000 end user organizations about their digital transformation challenges, their IT challenges, their, their trends, um, you know, how things are going in, in their organization. Uh, so the very first, uh, or one of the early questions that we ask them is about their top three IT trends. And we give them a choice of, of eight or nine within here. I don't expect you'll be able to read this. I'm very happy for anybody to have a copy of my uh, slides so you can, you can have another look at this later. Um, but the top three um, IT trends are the creation of a digital capability, 
they're modernizing legacy systems, so one of the other speakers talked about uh, legacy, and then thirdly, to manage security, identity, and privacy. So they're the top three trends from 2018 to 2019. But then we ha could have a look at the progress when it comes to digital transformation. Again, I think there's nine questions that we asked. The, what we found here is that fewer than 15% of organizations have a fully developed approach to addressing cybersecurity and digital risk. Fewer than 15%. This data was released on the 1st of October last year. I'm expecting uh, the 2019 to 20 data to be released next year, uh, sorry, next week, um, not next year. Um, and uh, I have seen a preview of that data and it's lower. It's less than 15%. It's now, I think it's below 13%. And what that shows is that it's a constantly evolving landscape for, for the office of the CISO to have to deal with. And so they've got to manage, they've got to balance these digital transformation demands, the, the need to create this digital capability with what, you know, with what uh, the, the CISO is there to do, the office of the CISO, which is to prevent, detect and respond to uh, security incidents and breaches. So if you've got your information security strategy aligned with your organizational strategy, then you've got much more chance of being able to support um, digital, uh, the development of digital capabilities. You know, the, the business challenges drive enterprise projects, which then expand the cyber threat landscape. So we need to be on board as information security functions with that. So, We've seen a growth in the number of CISOs uh, over the past couple of decades, I think. Um, you know, it, the reporting lines vary. Uh, sorry about the color on here. It looked beautiful on my screen in my dark office, but uh, not so much now. Um, but the reporting lines uh, do seem to vary. The traditional, usual reporting line is through the uh, CIO, through the Chief Information Security Officer. Seeing increasing numbers of CISOs reporting uh, through the chief risk officer, which makes good sense, or even directly to the CEO, uh, depending on the priority that security has in the organizations. None of these are wrong. Um, I could argue that going through the CIO, who has responsibility uh, for technology, is perhaps not the best route because security is about more than technology. But nevertheless, none of these routes is wrong. It's just kind of a role in transition, really. So I started out as a programmer many, many years ago. So we'd be called developers today. It was programmers in the old days. And I worked in um, an IT systems function um, <clears throat> alongside colleagues who were doing um, systems analysis. They were doing uh, operations. And then there was somebody sat in the corner whose responsibility it was for security, probably alongside their day job. It wasn't such a big issue in, in the 90s. However, it's blown up today to be a huge issue. Uh, and facing, you know, organizations face huge demands when it comes to uh, security. In my job, I'm lucky enough to be able to go talk to lots and lots of different enterprises. And we see organizations with two, three, four, a handful of people in their infosec function. We see people with hundreds, hundreds of, of people in their, in their security organization. It, it's absolutely amazing. Obviously, the higher the regulated industry, the more people they tend to have in their, in their security function. Um, but you know, the, the more connectivity that there is, the more the, the demands are on security. And uh, so, you know, the, the objective of this uh, security function is to prevent, detect, and respond to attacks, as, as the speaker previously uh, just mentioned. But then they have to use, you know, for security controls, people, process, and technology. I know I keep banging on about it, but so often people think that, um, of the general public, absolutely, think that security is all about technology, and it really isn't. We don't all sit in dark rooms uh, talking about uh, uh, technology, we like to go out and talk to, to real people. Um, so we've all got a role to play, I think, in security. So when it comes to structuring the office of the CISO, um, I've talked about organizational strategy driving information security strategy. It's essential that we have that infosec strategy uh, informed by organiz organizational strategy first. And then I would split the CISO, the office of the CISO into two areas. The first one is enterprise security management. 
And so this focuses on, on the approach to security you know, to, uh, around GRC, governance, risk, and compliance. Uh, I've just done a project for, uh, for a client where we uh, assessed the uh, readiness of enterprises uh, when it comes to dealing with digital risk. And uh, probably the best, ex the best way I can describe uh, organizational readiness is fragmented. It's not great. It's really not great. So if we have um, a, an enterprise security management capability within the office of the CISO, then you know, you've got a strong foundation then on which to, to develop and improve your organizational security posture. This is separate from the day-to-day -day stuff. The day-to-day -day stuff is run by enterprise security operations or the SOC, as you have probably heard about it, involved in the day-to-day -day prevention, detection, and response to, uh, to security incidents and breaches. So they may be looking at uh, a, a range of alerts that are coming through. They may be analyzing user behavior to spot the, the kind of Capital One attack, for example. And so thinking about your office of the CISO in this way can really help to bring uh, some structure uh, to the organization. So uh, a few recommendations that are driven, that have driven out from, uh, from my comments uh, today. Uh, so first of all, is about tone from the top. So your C-suite needs to demonstrate good security understanding um, and be positive about security. Um, this, the office of the CISO absolutely has a less difficult time if the C-suite is on board with security. Um, so you know, we often hear that people are the weakest line of defense. I loathe that term. I really, really don't like it because I think that um, people can be your strongest line of defense if you're informed, if you've got the proper tools, capabilities, training, processes, etc., in place. And that is really, really helped by uh, the tone from the top. The second one is about being business focused. So lots of people, I'll be very quick, <laughs> lots of people in information security, incredibly talented, but they're not always the best people to go out and talk to the business. So you really need a business focused um, uh, office of the CISO. Having a proactive approach to security, we shouldn't just be preventing, uh, looking to prevent all the time. We should prevent, detect, respond, but proactively thinking about the uh, enterpri enterprise security management group there as well. And then diversity. So, so John mentioned it earlier. Um, it's great to see uh, more women in the audience than we normally do. In the, in globally, there's around 11% of the workforce are female um, in the UK, it's actually significantly lower than that. It's between 8 and 9 percent, which is, which is bad. Um, we need a diverse team, not just gender diversity, but ethnic diversity, neurodiversity, and so it goes on. If we have a diverse team, then we're thinking, we've got a team of people who are thinking very differently. No, we don't all think the same. Uh, attackers don't think the same. Uh, uh, you know, the last speaker mentioned that. So we need to broaden our intersect thinking and have a diverse team within uh, the office of the CISO. So sorry, that was me rattling through very quickly. Uh, I hope that was helpful. And uh, yeah, okay, thank you all very much. Thank you.